His eyes show signs of petechial hemorrhaging, which is an indication that he was strangled. I think this was the killer's twisted way of making him suffer even more. It looks like Mr. Mathers put up quite a fight. He has a handful of the killer's hair. Hey, it looks like there's something in his mouth. I should photograph it first and then bag it. It reads, you should have minded your own business. Stop! RSPD! Hey, wait a second. This knife was not here a second ago. This must have been dropped by that guy when he fled the scene. I got you now, you son of a bitch. I see some ridge detail in the fingerprints. Hmm. Should be enough to get a positive ID. I have enough evidence collected to make an arrest. Charles Jenkins is suspect number one, and he lives in apartment 203, just across the hall. I should proceed carefully. Hmm. Did I remember to reload my firearm? I should check. Charles Jenkins, open up! This is the RSPD. The Holy Bible. It has some passages highlighted throughout. This guy is some kind of religious nut, a misinterpreting written word in his own sick and twisted mind. The battery is dead. However, I'm almost certain there will be incriminating evidence on there.
take that down. Then get there. Damn, did I get that down? Stand on that? Oh, okay. Hell yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh my god, come on now. This door leads to the third floor. I have no need to go up there. Can't get this guy, I can't get up in here. Can't use this damn thing. This 
go get it then. My nigga. That worked. Oh! Hold on, let me get this right. What the? Charles Jenkins, come out and show yourself. I know you're up here. Freeze! Drop the knife. Turn around and get on your knees and put your hands behind your head. Now! Charles Jenkins, you're under arrest for the murder of Jack Mathers and eight other women. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Upon further investigation, I discovered that Jack Mathers was in fact a retired homicide detective for the Riverside PD. He's been out of the game now for over a decade. Like all good cops, they take their cold case files into retirement with them in hopes of solving them one day. However, Mr. Matters took it one step too far when he moved in across the hall from one of his suspects. And unfortunately, it cost him his life. At least his sacrifice will give the victim's family some peace of mind. And some much needed closure. The FBI's top 10 most wanted scumbags. <laughs> I'm not FBI, but I am told to keep an eye out for these guys during my investigations. <laughs> Memories of the past. Hmm, this is my active case. I should probably review apartment 202 before proceeding with this one, however. More cases to come soon. Huh. Isn't that always the case?
Hello and welcome to another edition of Riverside Action News. My name is Cliff Bradford. In tonight's top story, the Riverside slasher has struck again, claiming his third victim in as little as 30 days. A woman's body washed ashore early this morning at the Green Hills Reservoir, where the prior two victims were also found. All three women had their throats cut and were found wrapped in plastic. The police commissioner stated that their legs were bound in chains and are thought to have been tied to a heavy object and thrown overboard. He also commented that he believes that there are more bodies to be discovered at the reservoir. Currently, a search team is exploring this possibility. When asked, the police refused to further comment in respects to having any suspects or new leads at this time. These killings have left the people of Riverside in terror, reeling at the possibility of when he may strike These people again. listen here. The mayor in a I've statement be the has issued a citywide curfew until the killer is apprehended. More news on this story as it unfolds. And in other news, a missing boy, Jamie Scottsdale, missing since Saturday, was found this afternoon in the Rushmount Park Reserve. He suffered a blow to his head. This billboard contains photos and evidence about my sister's Central mysterious Hospital, death. He has been for there are way too many unanswered questions, and I'm and not willing to let it go way. just yet. He is I should probably read the notes to the right. It will give me some insight into the case. Soon. Jackson D., a mother of two, was arrested yesterday for setting fire to her downtown apartment, which claimed the lives of two elderly people on the floor above. In a statement from her lawyer, Mrs. D. said that she needed the insurance money and did not intend for others to get hurt. Her court date has been set for the beginning of next month. A protest downtown last week ended in tragedy as Miley Jones, one of the protest organizers, was shot. She was in critical condition at County Central Hospital. However, she succumbed to her injuries late last night. The man responsible is still at large. However, according to police, they have a few suspects that fit the description given by the protest participants and expect to have their man in custody soon. More news coming at the top of the hour every hour. Now let's head on over to our weatherman for this week's forecast. Jim? There's no point in leaving my office. I just got here. Plus, it's really busy and really noisy out there, and I've got a lot of work to do. 